Jay's here. It is December. It's a Christmas time. Yeah. Well, not excited. Hmm. I want you to be excited. You know, as you get older, the excitement is diminishing every single year. But if you don't have the anticipation of Christmas, that means you are getting old. Do you remember why you were so excited when Christmas approaches when you were a little kid? Yep, it was gift. That's why all the children are anxiously waiting for Christmas. And we, children do not care what our parents are going through. Here, imagine someone whom you never met gave you the most precious gift. How would you feel? Something that could change your life. It's not like iPhone 12 Pro, something that money cannot buy. Let me show you this video. This video will tell you the story of the most precious gift was given by traveling nurse and a special education teacher. Indeed, this one of the story happened at our own backyard, Fairfax Innova Hospital. Many of you are born in this hospital. Let's watch. It was definitely just part of my calling and helping people. Ready? I just felt like jumping, you know, it was so exciting. <laughs> This is just a different birthday, but it was a great one. <laughs> to meet the stranger who changed your life and you theirs. Oh my God. Moments before 31-year-old Kat Felkoff saw Augustine de la O. Martinez for the very first time, they shared a feeling of anticipation unlike any. Well, I would like to hug her, but obviously I probably can't. Kind of have like tears, kind of want to cry. I'm excited to meet him. I'm really excited. Velkoff, a special education teacher, found out soon after she volunteered to be a living kidney donor that she was a match for Martinez. The 24-year-old had been on dialysis for years due to a childhood disease. I just have so much gratitude for her. I've never met anyone who would do that for a complete stranger. And they both agreed to meet each other just two days later. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. This is the best thing I've ever done with my life. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. You gave me a second chance. I'm just so glad that it's finally all over and I'm gonna work hard so that I can have this kidney for the rest of my life. You know, I think we're all part of a community. This is what communities do for each other. We help each other. Can you do that? To a total stranger? Giving you a kidney? I am sure this baby and his family and this young man will be forever grateful as he said, they have a second chance to live. That must be an unspeakable joy and excitement. Here is another indescribable, unspeakable gift. Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 15, Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Paul was thanking God for his indescribable gift. You know, in King James Bible, it says as an unspeakable gift. What could that be? 
unspeakable gift, indescribable gift? What could that be? That's right, it's Jesus. Why is God's gift indescribable, unspeakable, ineffable, inexpressible, too wonderful for word, and precious beyond telling? One simple reason. Jesus was so much more than any other things in the whole world. His birth saved all mankind. His birth gave us the second chance to live. His birth gave us the eternal life. It is the most precious gift was given to us. But think about it. Yet there was no Christmas light just like us right now. No joyful carols. Not even had a bed to lie down. The indescribable gift. Baby Jesus was born in a manger. He came as a tiny baby wrapped in more than swaddling clothes. But look at what this baby, tiny, this tiny baby did to the whole humankind. Jesus is much more. As the 2020 Christmas approaches, I want us to prepare Christmas in two ways. First, our heart. Have you accepted Jesus as your personal Savior and Lord? Do you believe Jesus died on the cross to forgive your sins? If you are not sure whether you are saved, this Christmas season, I want you to accept Jesus as your Savior and Lord. That's all it takes. If you are not sure whether you are going to heaven if you die tonight, And I want to open your heart. Invite Jesus as your Savior and Lord. And just repeat after me. Do the, this, these prayers. Lord, I accept you as my Savior. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's all it takes. If you already accepted Jesus as your Savior and Lord, Examine your Christian life, whether you live as a true Christian or false Christians. There are so many fake Christians out there. Prepare Christmas as you prepare Christmas for your own sake. Second, I want us to prepare Christmas as we prepare a gift. For whom? Not for me. Nor you either. Look around your neighbors. Look around the world. Look at the food bank line. Look at the clothing mission. Look at the homeless shelters. Look at the family who lost their loving ones. Look at the family struggling with the sickness. Look at the missionaries who are working in a harsh environment. We've got to do something. The other day, I heard the word Giving Tuesday. Yes. Right after Thanksgiving, we call it Black Friday. And after Cyber Monday, following Tuesday is called as a Giving Tuesday. As I listened to the word, I felt so sad and bitter. It means donate to those who need after you finish shopping, after you spend money, that's not right. You know what? Some people are standing on the line for food. Some people are standing on the line for unemployment paycheck. Some people are holding two, three jobs to support their family. Giving donation after shopping? Please! That's not right. In our church, during Last two Wednesday services, we heard the messages from Cambodia, Turkey, Korea, Alaska, Texas, Indiana, the pastors and missionaries, the testimonies. Missionaries and pastors, some more churches in USA were hit really hard by coronavirus. This pandemic made their ministry and their life really tough. 
they need our help. They need our support. Our little support can change people's life. Look at these children in Philippines. They're watching and worshiping as they look at the small, tiny old smartphone. All we do, we send a sermon link. All we do, we send some mission offering once a year. We don't deserve to be thanked by these children. We don't deserve to be thanked by the pastors or teachers. Let's watch this video clips. Dr. J would like to say thank you, thank you very much in behalf of PTL and your hope in God for sharing the videos every Sunday. We will reach out our children and others in this pandemic. It helps a lot to the children to serve God and know Him better. May God continually bless your life, ministry, and family. God give the desires of your heart. In behalf of New Hope in God Church, I am pleased to express our gratitude to First Virginia Baptist Church for sharing your videos to our Sunday school kids. And as a teacher of Sunday school, I'm happy to know that there is such a great way on how to teach our kids, especially about the Bible, and get to know more about Jesus Christ. And that is through the videos you share. They really have fun and enjoy watching those videos. And for that, we're so happy for our kids, and we're so thankful. That's all, and God bless you all. Hello, Dr. J. Kim and First Virginia Baptist Church. We would like to thank you for extending your ministry to us and by touching our lives in, in so many ways. Uh, the ministry here in the Philippines is also, uh, is also tough, so hard to meet the people. And many, many elderly are so afraid to, uh, to entertain us, so, oh, th th which is why the, uh, the live stream and the online gatherings uh, you know, really are helpful to them. So we pray that uh, uh, the Lord will continue to use you mightily, uh, uh, reaching more people for Christ. So once again, Dr. Jekyll, thank you so much. Uh, God bless. Many, many people are going through horrible, horrible time right now. They need help. They need our support. We should support those mission fields. We need to support our missionaries. We need to support our pastors in small town. They are doing God's work. Think about it. God gave us His only Son. Indescribable gift. Unspeakable gift. Even some people even gave their organ to a total stranger. What are we doing? What are we doing as we call ourselves as Christian? Our tiny gift can be a huge gift to change people's life. Let's support them. Not with the leftover money from the shopping. Let's support God's ministry with our heart and prayers. Even your used smartphone will do. Even you have any old computers, let's send them. Let's send them to the mission field. Anything. First of all, we have to give our prayers. If we can support those missionaries, ministers, we gotta do it. Whatever we send them to, they can use efficiently. Let's give something during this Christmas. Your tiny gift can be a huge gift for somebody's life. As tiny baby Jesus saved whole world and you and me. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we 
preparing this Christmas, we realize that you came as a very tiny baby, but your work, your ministry, and your mission was way bigger than we could imagine. You came as a tiny baby to save whole ma- humankind. Father, we thank you for giving us your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Father, let us prepare this Christmas. Let us prepare our heart to accept baby Jesus Christ as my Savior. Let us prepare this Christmas as we look around the world. If there is anyone who needs my help, let us have courage, let us have love to share your grace with them. We thank you for saving us. Thank you for giving us Jesus Christ. Now, I'm asking you abundant blessing in the name of the Father and Son and Holy Spirit to every one of us here, as well as all the missionaries, ministers, spreading your word throughout the world, all the medical staff taking care of patients as they sacrifice their life, all the American soldiers fighting for peace and freedom throughout the countries, bring them home safely.